Hello, 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 whatever you hear. Well, listen up. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Hat Historian. In this video, I'll be talking about a hat that has become recognisable throughout the world as a mark of the British police constable. The custodian helmet. Something of a minor British symbol, the custodian helmet, also known as the policeman or Bobby's helmet, is a type of helmet typically worn by the men of the British police forces. Highly recognisable throughout the world, used in films, cartoons, caricatures and more to represent British law enforcement and sometimes establishing shots to place a scene more generally in England, it is a dome-shaped helmet originally made of cork but now usually made of blue felt-covered plastic and exists in three main designs, the comb style, the rose top style and the ball style. While in the past some other police forces have also worn similar hats, it is now most closely associated with the United Kingdom. So how did the British policemen get such distinctive hats? When it was first founded in 1829, the London Metropolitan Police wore stovepipe top hats as their standard headgear. As I have mentioned in a previous video, they were said to be reinforced to allow policemen to stand on them to see above obstacles. However, they tended to be heavy and hot when worn all day, and by the 1860s the force was looking for a comfortable yet practical replacement. This came in the form of a cork helmet introduced in 1863 and designed by Christie's of London, a renowned hatter. The original design followed the comb style, with a large crest running from the back to the summit called the coxcomb and featuring a fairly flat brim. Many sources say that the custodian helmet was inspired by the German Pickelhaube, which I've talked about before, a leather helmet famous for its prominent spike on the summit. However, there are reasons to doubt this, and another source seems likelier as the inspiration. Germany, or should I say Prussia, and the UK were somewhat at odds during this time, political rivals in Europe. Furthermore, the Pickle Harbour was also associated with Russia, whom the British had fought in Crimea the previous decade. Therefore, using it as a template for British law enforcement seems unlikely. Sadly, the original designs, which might have included studies and inspirations, have long since been lost, so it is impossible to know for certain. But it seems likelier given the shape and period that it is based on the Elwood and Sons air chamber pith helmet introduced in the 1850s, which had a tube running down from the top to provide ventilation to the head in hot climates. In fact, Christie's design so resembled Elwood's that the latter filed a lawsuit. The comb's appearance, incidentally, was itself inspired by early 19th century dragoon helmets, which took cues from ancient classical designs. The similarity is also reinforced by the use of almost the same materials for its construction, with only the covering cloth differing. The custodian helmet was trialed for two years to see if it would suit the needs of policemen. This new helmet proved popular with the men, some of whom already had experience with pith helmets from the military, who found it more comfortable and cooler to wear than the top hats on their shifts, which could last up to eight hours. It was also less likely to get knocked off and offered some protection to the wearer against blows. This coxcomb style was fully adopted in 1865 and remained the only one for the better part of a decade, though its height was slightly reduced to make it more stable on the head, and in the 1870s the brim, originally turned up, was made to come down sharply and more resemble cavalry helmets. Other police forces throughout the country started adopting variations on the helmet, affixing their own symbol to the front. In the 1870s, a new style began to emerge as well, inspired by the army's foreign service pith helmet. Rather than a comb, it was more bell-shaped and topped with a finial that could be a small ball, but was often vaguely rose-shaped, leading to the name Rose Top. The finial hid some ventilation holes to act similarly to the comb. At around the same time, in 1878, the army adopted the Home Service Helmet, a blue version of the pith helmet which was in the fashion of the day topped with a spike. This led some police forces to put spikes on top of their own helmets, rendering them almost indistinguishable from the Home Service Helmet, and is probably the source of the belief that it is related to the Pickelhaube. Throughout this period, each regional police force came up with its own uniform, and while many, especially in cities, imitated the influential Metropolitan Police, or else adopted styles reminiscent of the military, all of which featured a helmet, some others used very different styles of headwear, ranging from straw helmets to Australian-style bush hats, notably in rural areas. This changed in the 1830s, when an attempt to standardize the appearance of law enforcement was made. This included the home office pattern, modeled after the Metropolitan Police version, with a large Brunswick star badge on the front and a rose top finial. While this effort did manage to bring a little more uniformity to the appearances and popularize the Brunswick star as the background for police forces symbols, it did not have quite the success that had been hoped for, with many forces retaining different styles of helmets to this day. It did however convince some of the last holdouts to adopt the custodian helmet as their headgear. 
The helmet changed little for the next 40 years, retaining the traditional designs and construction. They were still made of cork, with a simple leather sweatband to maintain it on the head, and the plates and finials were attached by small screwed lugs sticking out on the inside, and the helmet was prevented from being knocked off with a simple leather chin strap. This design started to prove to be a problem, particularly in the 1960s, as even during riot control, the custodian helmet was the standard helmet worn. It soon became obvious that it was poorly adapted to serious riot protection. The leather chin strap didn't hold it on very well, so it was likely to fall off during a scuffle. The cork construction provided little protection from heavy objects thrown, and the lugs inside could cause injuries by piercing the head if the helmet was deformed by a blow. In the 70s and 80s, new designs were introduced to address these problems. While visually the appearance remained identical, the construction was radically changed. Under the covering felt, instead of cork, helmets were now made of molded plastic, more akin to a hard hat. Similarly, inside, a new cushioning webbing was installed to cushion possible blows, and two chin straps were installed. The traditional leather one for normal duties, and a heavier harness one for more extreme situations, which could be tucked inside when not in use. Finally, the plates were no longer attached with lugs, but with tabs that would be spurred flat inside, therefore no longer posing a risk to the wearer. During this period, most forces also improved the decorative plates, adding enamel color to the previous monochromatic appearance. The helmet has remained roughly the same ever since. While the custodian helmet is mostly associated throughout the world with Britain, other police forces have worn some form of helmet at some point in their history. Naturally, several of those are in former nations of the British Empire, notably Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, who wore various helmets in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, before replacing them in the 1950s, as they were not adapted to local climate or use. New Zealand retained a white summer version into the 1990s, which Samoan police officers still use in full dress, and the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary still retains them as part of its ceremonial uniform. Outside the Commonwealth, a hat resembling the custodian helmet was worn by various police forces in the United States in the late 19th century, notably the NYPD. Slightly more bell-shaped, it was often made of felt rather than cork. Such helmets are famously worn in the film series The Keystone Cops by the eponymous characters. They were phased out in the early decades of the 20th century in favor of the peaked cap more commonly associated with American police. A white helmet is worn to this day by Italian municipal police officers, Portuguese traffic police, and the Modigasque Carabinier du Prince. Some police officers in various warm climate countries, particularly those standing in one spot for a long time, like directing traffic, wear pith helmets directly resembling those worn by colonial force, either British or French, as they are good at protecting from the harsh sun. Jordanian police also wear a unique pith helmet with a visor, a cloth on the back to protect the neck, and a spike on its summit. The custodian helmet is still worn by the vast majority of the police forces of England and Wales. In Scotland, however, they were phased out in the 1950s in favor of a more common peaked cap. The alleged reason was the climate. Being darker and wetter than the further south made the helmet less easy to recognize at a distance. In the rest of the country, despite the iconic image that it has, there have been efforts in the last 15 years to phase it out in favor of something considered more modern. The first efforts were in 2002, when some police officers tried to replace it with a bump cap, a hardened baseball cap. But this proved very unpopular with both the police and the public, and the attempt was quickly abandoned. More recently, other forces announced the phasing out of custodian helmets for daily wear in favor of peak caps or baseball caps, citing changing fashions, comfort while riding in a car, where the traditional helmet is too tall to fit, and the risk of it falling off while running. Some of these, such as the Thames Valley, Manchester, North Wales, Leicestershire, and others, have since then brought them back, as the baseball caps were considered too sloppy and unprofessional in appearance, and the helmet was seen as a much more recognizable symbol, allowing a policeman to be easily spotted. Most of the forces that have abandoned the helmet in the last decade have since reinstated them, with only three out of the 43 territorial forces in England and Wales not using them. Several British territories also include them as part of their uniform, such as Jersey, Guernsey, and Bermuda, the Isle of Man they use a distinct white version. Traditionally only issued to male police constables, with women wearing a hardened bowler hat as their standard headdress, some forces have allowed female police officers to wear the custodian helmet if they so prefer, and the Staffordshire police issues it to all their constables regardless of gender. The custodian helmet has become something of a symbol of the UK, recognizable throughout the world and appearing in many pieces of popular culture. It is featured in many movies taking place in Britain, and can often be used in establishing shots to place a scene in the country, in the same way as the famous red phone booths or double-decker buses. Despite attempts to replace it, its unique appearance and beloved status amongst the British public have allowed it to endure, and its solid, yet practical and elegant design make it well-liked amongst the many of its wearers and seems to ensure that it will remain present for many years to come, an iconic symbol of the Bobby on the Beat. So I hope once again that you found this video interesting and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.